What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today is another movie review. We're back doing weekly movie reviews. So excited to talk about this film today because we got another big blockbuster coming out today. Yes, this past weekend we have the newest installation in the Marvel, I don't want to say the MCU because not technically in the MCU, but greater Marvel Universe. Y'all already know what we're talking about. Say we were talking about the sequel to the original Venom. Venom, let there be carnage. Now I did finally see the first Venom movie. I watched it the night before I went to the theater to watch this. So fresh in my mind, I do have my thoughts on the first two movies and safe to say I enjoyed them for what they were. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to get into the good, get into the bad, tell you what I liked, tell you what I didn't like. Then we will get into the point breakdown. So excited to talk about this one. And not only that, this is also going to be this week's episode of the podcast as well. We're going to be talking about Venom, Let There Be Carnage in more detail. But I think without further ado, let's just hop right in and let's get going. I, I mean, there, there's a lot to talk about here. I, like I said, I saw the original the night before, so my thoughts were very fresh on both of them. And I'm very, very excited to talk about them because I, the basis of these films is they are supposed to be fun and action-packed. That's the entire basis of these. They're like Deadpool films. They are. They're like the films of the Deadpool franchise. They're supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be fun and have a lot of really crazy action. And that's what these films are. They accomplish that to a T. And I really like that and respect that. And like that that's the way that they take it. It's absolutely fantastic. But let's get into the goods. The first good is kind of harkening back to the first one as well. The thing I like so much about the first Venom is the Eddie and Venom relationship. You know, the the old, I like to say they're the old married couple that we, we've always needed. Uh, they, they really are. And that's kind of what the second film is, is kind of teasing at and talking about is them really like a married couple and the relationship that they have. So basically the point I'm trying to make here is that was the thing I love so much about the first one. They upped the ante in this one in all the best ways. Not now. It's not, I have this foreign symbiote in my body. I have no idea what you are. Now it's, how am I going to accept living with this symbiote in me and, 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 and the relationship between them. That's the next step in this relationship. And I really like that this is the the path that they took. And it led to more funny, quippy conversations that I really, really wanted to have. And, and it was. And it was there. And it was really well done. And I, I left with some laughs. I had a smile on my face when I walked out. And it was, it was really good. Andy Serkis directs a really great movie. I, I think Andy Serkis is one of the really good working talents in Hollywood today. Obviously, he's known mainly for his mocap performances, you know, most notably Caesar in uh, the Planet of the Apes trilogy. And he really stretched his directorial chops here. I think the cinematography is overall really beautiful. There are some really awesome shots throughout the film. Uh, we saw a lot of them in the trailer, but there's no, no doubt that it's, it's pretty well shot and a little jarring at times, but that's that's more due to kind of, again, the relationship. The whole film is based on the relationship between Eddie and Venom, and you can see that in the, the ways that, you know, the film is shot, the ways that it's composed, and I, I really liked that. I think Andy Serkis really did a fantastic job at directing this film. One of the high points for me overall, Woody Harrelson is having the time of his life in this film. You can tell he is. And he gives a remarkable performance, like scary good. And by scary good, also just scary. It's a scary performance, but it's extremely, extremely well done. And something I'm gonna remember for a while because it really was a haunting performance by by Woody Harrelson. And I do have some issues with his arc in the, in the writing of his arc, but we'll get into that in the negatives. But him and his performance were a bright spot in this film and I'm very glad he was cast to play Carnage. It was it was extremely well done and a lot of fun. A lot of fun and that's why I'm gonna keep coming back to. It's fun, it's fun, it's fun. And that's what this film is. The action. The action is great. I think it's composed very nicely. I like when we get to see the symbiotes against each other and seeing the different abilities that they have and how you're gonna counter them and fight them. Venom is kind of the if you're looking at this like a video game he's kind of like the level one character 
who doesn't have a lot of special abilities. He's just kind of is a symbiote and he's got the, the, the kind of the base symbiotic abilities. And then you've got, you know, the carnages of the world. And, and then I forget the, the one in the first film, but, but, but you get like the carnages who have, who are more advanced, have more advanced skill sets, weapons, and things like that. And it's very interesting to watch and see, Hey, how, how is Venom and Eddie going to overcome a villain that is like them, but, but more powerful in many ways. Now, I do like, and this is a spoiler review, I just want to say it off the top. I do like that the main reason why Venom is able to beat Carnage is because Carnage and his host are not a perfect match, whereas Eddie and Venom are a perfect match, and that's how they're able to best Carnage. I kind of liked that. I liked the writing of that, but I think overall the action and, and seeing how Venom overcomes, you know, realistically and subjectively more powerful villains... Uh, how he overcomes those battles and i really enjoyed that and it's 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 really well done here it really is the quick runtime it's only about an hour and a half i think it's like an hour 36 um i really liked that cut to the chase the pacing was phenomenal didn't have any problems with it at all we got into the third act pretty swiftly and i loved that cut to the chase get where we're going we don't need to do a lot of um a lot of world building because we did that in the first movie. It's kind of my gripe with the first movie is that the first the first act or so is a little slow, but a lot of that is world building and kind of you know introducing us to the characters in the world. So I get that. And the great part about that is the second movie, you don't have to do that. You can cut to the chase, get where you're going. And I liked that. I really did enjoy that. It was freaking awesome. And you know, just because movie's short doesn't mean it's bad. A movie can still accomplish things in a short runtime. And this is a great example of that because Venom, uh, Let There Be Cars, was able to do that and accomplish it in a short runtime. And I, I, I really did enjoy it. I think that was great. The mid credit scene is awesome. I love it. I'm not getting into detail on that here. That is going to be the, the big thing I talk about in my episode of the podcast, Fanatic Film Review. So go over to the podcast. Um, it'll be out on Wednesday. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Go uh, rate, review, subscribe. Got to do that plug for you guys. I'm not going to talk about the mid credit scene here. I'm going to go in depth on it. My theories, what I think's going on in my podcast. So go over there, rate, review, subscribe. Go check it out. Episode three is going to be on Venom, Let There Be Carnage and that awesome mid credit scene. Had to do that plug, but the post credit scene was sick. That's what I'll say. All right, with the good comes the bad. Let's get into the negatives. So I said Woody Harrelson is great, and he is. I think he's one of the best parts of the film, but his arc, I didn't love his arc. And I don't know if I said I didn't love his arc. I didn't love the love interest. I didn't think she contributed a lot. I um, think she was underwritten. don't think she was written very well. Um, and I think that having her ability be the exact opposite, kind of the kryptonite of the symbiotes, didn't dig it. I understand what they were going for. Didn't really think it landed. I didn't think his arc was completely well written, is what I'll say. It's kind of a generic revenge story, which works in some cases. I liked how it worked with, with Eddie, but in the grand scheme, didn't really love it. That's what I'll say. The writing overall, I don't think is fantastic. I think there's some plot holes. I think it's not completely just that good. But it is it does kind of fall into a Fast and Furious realm where these movies aren't necessarily supposed to be the most sound written movies, but they're supposed to be a lot of fun, very action packed and very funny. So this all comes and wraps around again to kind of what I like to call the Fast and Furious syndrome where, yeah, the movie's maybe not that well written, but it's a lot of fun on screen and I had a great time. So that's not that big of a gripe I have with it. Um, I think the best parts written are the Eddie and Venom relationship. I do think that that's done well, and I did rate this movie higher than I rated the original Venom. I will say that as well. So that's just one negative I have. Better than the first, but that's not saying a lot, because I did in enjoy the first one, but again, it, it falls in the trap of the Fast and Furious, where it's not great written-wise. It's not this, this great piece of cinema you know, even though I really enjoyed a lot of the aspects of it, you still have to be realistic as well. And I got to keep my critic, rep not reputation, my critic, um, I don't know. Uh, I, got, I, mean, I don't know. 
re- not reputation, but you guys know what I'm saying. I, I, my credibility. You got to keep your credibility and, and, you know, look at the movie for all reasons. And I'm, you guys will see when I give the rating, it's still an average movie. I think there's a lot of really high points. I don't think it's the best in terms of technical prowess or the written side, but I do think the direction is very strong. I think that the performances, most of the performances are pretty good. And again, the thing that anchors it all is that Eddie Brock and Venom relationship. I think that's done well. And I did really enjoy that. So that's it with the review, uh, the good and the bad. (coughs) Sorry, just sneezed. I'm sorry if I just blew your eardrums out. Um, But with that, let's get in to the point breakdown. Let's do it right now. I'm very excited to talk about this one. I got to pull it up on my phone. Please excuse me. Go follow me on Letterboxd. That's what I'm pulling up right now. Here we go. Entertainment. I gave a 12 out of 15. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Had a good time. Performances, 11 out of 15. I did tick that up from the first one. I actually did, thanks to Woody Harrelson's performance. Writing, 10 out of 15. Uh, Knocked five points. I don't think it's anything great, but I don't think it's anything terrible either. Uh, The direction, I gave a 9 out of 10. Again, Andy Serkis is fantastic in this. Uh, The emotion, I gave a 6 out of 10. The emotion, actually, I forgot to mention this, is one of the weaker points of the film. I did not feel any emotion for our characters at all. Uh, that's just kind of how it is, and I hate to say it. Cinematography, 8 out of 10. Like I said, there are some really awesome shots in there. Sound, 3 out of 5. Didn't think there's anything spectacular about it. Just kind of was there. Uh, the score, 4 out of 5. Enjoyed it. Pacing, 5 out of 5. One of the things I will continue to harken back to is I love the short runtime. I think that that worked to its strength. I think it was very, very well done. Rewatchability, 5 out of 5, and the automatic, 5 out of 5 points, which means if you did the math, that means I gave... I gave Venom Let There Be Carnage a 78 out of 100. I gave the original Venom a 77 out of 100. So it only got one more point than the original, but I did enjoy it for what it was. Like I said, don't go in thinking you're going to get a very rich written story with lots of awesome themes and things like that. This is not the peak of cinema, but it is a lot of fun. It's very funny. It's very action-packed. It's like a Deadpool. It's like a Fast and Furious. That's what these films are, and I think they do that to their strength. Really enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What did you think? That is pretty much it, guys. I want you all uh, to subscribe if you have not already. That's one thing I'll say. We're tr- we got to 800 subscribers. Thank you all so much. Next is 900 and then 1,000. We got to do that. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, go subscribe if you have not already. Again, like the video. Go check out the podcast, Fanatic Film Review. Rate, review, subscribe if you have not already. Episode 3 is going to be on Venom. Let there be carnage. And that is pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Again, go down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Venom. Let there be carnage. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.